He actually did play here last year in the third round. Lifetime Rogers six and two. Last year's match was love four and six for Federer. Fred Tour is not a big guy, as you, as you can tell when you look at him. He's about 5'10", and when he gets in trouble is when he plays a couple tough matches. But the good news for him is this is the second round. It's Friday. He's fresh, and he's going to be able to give it absolutely everything he's got. And anyone that's beaten Federer twice has my respects. That's one thing that we we actually talked about because he, he's, he's so comfortable at net. He plays a lot of doubles, Santoro. So he's going to be able to at least try to make something happen on Federer's second serve. As I take credit for that play. <laughs> Fabrice currently ranked at 76 in the world. Hasn't played a lot of singles this year, just counting here 14 and 14. 14. And Federer with a smooth 66 and 3 record this year. Federer, when I talked to him earlier, just before the tournament, talked about his desire to improve his net play. Being around Tony Roach, he realizes mm -hmm. how great a volleyer Tony was, and that that's an area that he believes. I mean, he's awful good, but he believes he can get better there. Santoro mixes up the it. spins. Is the it? forehand's beautiful. That's awesome. But he, he knifes it. How do you do that? Well, it's it's. How many people do you see hit two-handed forehands like that? So it's not easy, believe me. But it, the ball skits. It stays very low. So I don't care who you are. It's tough to handle. The problem is he doesn't have to reach. So with Federer, just gives him one out wide. IBM serve speed at 113. Guys hitting the ball cleanly already. First game. So Federer had to go to a deuce, but he does begin the match with a hold. For first game. So this is what Roger Federer's road to the final would look like being playing second round on Friday night. That, that complicates things for him because that means six matches in about 10, 10 days. And that is uh, not ideal. Let's just say that. <laughs> well, there have only been three men, the Magic Three, that have beaten him this year, Safin, Gasquet, and Nadal. Those are his three losses in 69 matches. Two on clay. And you mentioned Centauri. He's getting on. He's 32, 33 in December, I believe. His year is sub 500. Just looking at his his uh, year, these are guys he's beaten. Them. I mean, he's he's beaten Thomas Johansson, who's at the semis of at, at, at Doha, Monfils. Well, oh. <laughs> well, there's his first magic trick of the night. I think standing O is in order. Yeah, the magician. I don't think he beat those guys with shots like that, but look at this. And they're showing it on the big video board just as we show it. Another ooh in the crowd. He's also beaten that. 
David now banding on Clay. Uh, Joachim Johansson, Feliciano Lopez. That's a pretty good list. Ivan Lubacic a couple weeks ago. Okay, Paul Henry Matthew, his countryman. I mean, this guy's uh, Andre Pavel, who is uh, Murray. I mean, this guy's had a lot of wins. Don't try this if you haven't had children. I mean, it's just, it's a, how many times, I mean, is that like one in a thousand you see the player that pulls that off actually wins the point? It's actually probably more than that. Really? And you'd be surprised how often the players can get that in. They're pretty good at this shot. Now, w winning the point drops to probably one in 50. And I wouldn't call it one in a thousand. And again, not, not a big player, but not bad. He got that serve up at 119. He's a very fit and strong. He's got legs and moves extremely well Probably still at 32. That was what was noticeable on that shot, was how well he got back to the ball. And he's fresh, and fresh legs. And he's got to play singles and doubles. Actually was upset yeah, first round in the doubles and he's and he lost in the mixed doubles, so this is it for Fabrice. Mm -hmm. Normally he's he, he, mentally he saves a part I think he saves himself a little bit because his bread and uh, butter is is the doubles. Uh, him and um, Michael Loger lost to Julian Noel and Jurgen Melser first round. Lodrip had struggled in singles when he played Moya. Passed out on the way back after having the default, so that probably didn't help him. Nice to hook that ball in, didn't do it there. Serve, so we start the match on serve. The prime time at the open featuring Magic of Fabrice Santoro. The U.S. Open on USA is brought to you in part by Mass Mutual Financial Group. You can't predict, you can prepare. Williams sisters both winning this afternoon and tonight. They meet each other Sunday. Now we see men's number one, Roger Federer. Those are the points that Santoro can't afford to lose. And that was one he had in his back pocket. Got ever so slightly tentative with that volley, and Federer will make you pay. Should have put the first one away. It's easy to say from up here. You know, also unusual, this whole game is unusual, but hitting two-handed volleys, you don't see that a whole lot. <laughs> well, Santoro did reach as high as 17 in the world in singles. He has four career titles. Surprising, he's, he's high in doubles. Is six. Thought he would have been higher. Two Grand Slam doubles titles, one mixed. Santoro's second serve is vulnerable, so that's where Uko Federer is returning. Mm -hmm. He's already a couple feet inside the baseline. And that's what he's going to look to do the whole night. Mm -hmm. 
Butter, if there's a, anything negative you can say is that he, at times he tries, he runs through the volleys. He, he doesn't slow himself down, steady himself to hit a firmer shot, but he'll, he'll learn that quick. He'll probably learn it in this match. He's devastating the good forehand. You see, he measures, he, he takes, he, he makes it look so easy. He can go faster, but he mm -hmm. actually, when he hits the ball, he's so balanced and doesn't seem like you're f able to get him on the defensive. Oh, man, that was a great return. And it's the hardest serve Santoro's hit. It came back in a hurry. Passed him. Yeah, and he couldn't even get to the service line. He's playing well and he's down 3 1. <laughs> Welcome to Federer's world. Yeah, I mean, he had to work so hard to stay in this, but this is a great shot right here. He made Federer hit up. He just didn't have enough wind there. He yeah. didn't put enough on it. I, I'm just astounded how he changes grips from one flank to the other. That, that's incredible. He can do that so quickly. Did you notice he also, in that point, ran around his forehand to hit it back in? Mm -hmm. well, that is unusual. Oh! Federer took, after Wimbledon, a month off and was really not on court for about a month, which he said was the longest time he'd been away in his career. He worked for about eight days with Tony Roach. When he finally came back to play. John, that's where a lot of what we talk about, those in-season breaks that that some people are believing that's more important or at least as important for a player as the off-season. He struggled a bit in Cincinnati. James Blake, first round, was six mm -hmm. and five. He had some three-set matches. It came together for him. And Ginepri had him on the ropes. Six, four, five all. The rains came, he regrouped. His foot was ailing a bit, and he played a lot of tennis. It was a good time for him to take off. The hard courts are going to take more out of you physically. So now he's, if he had lost first round, that may have complicated things. But he wins the tournament, so he's got six matches there before. He's working incredibly hard. He's got a chance to break back. It, 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 that passing shot, again, is, is a classic example of what you should do with, when you don't have the power. You know, just keep it low. He forces Federer to hit up. It's a magnificent play by Santoro. Chance to break. Throwing the kitchen sink, and he's definitely trying everything. All right, that's a souvenir now. The policy here on Ash Stadium Court, this U.S. Open. But you see these first few games while you're right playing for Santoro as much a mind game as it is a physical game. 
you just don't see anybody like this, do you? Mm -hmm. He's, the, the, the if you looked at the definition of crafty, I mean, mm -hmm. thank you, you'd see his name. The crowd's even reacting to that ball that he, how he handled that ball to feather him. He's got incredible touch. He should have made that volley. That's why he yelled at himself. Great. That's just fun to watch. It's fun to watch. He's down 4 1. <laughs> fun for me, right? <laughs> well, Teddy kept his eye on the ball here. He got to hand it to him. Look at that right there. Mansoor Barami, who plays on the Seniors Tour with myself and others, he'd be proud of yeah. the he's, he's probably worried. His job's I, I, exactly. We're seeing the new. Barami. It's a great shot. More aggressive than I've seen Fetter already attacking the net. That shot he just hit here is very hard. Again, Centuro is trying to spin that ball. That was going to drop in. I mean, you've got to be strong to pull that off and time that just right. He makes so many tough shots on these. The mark of greatness right there. Well, players watching, they should watch the way he moves because he times his movement. He doesn't run too hard to the ball it's because then it would... You'd have to jar yourself to push back. Mm -hmm. So he does what he needs to do to keep himself on balance and thinking of a couple shots ahead if he needs it. Ball was long. So Torres is taking a long look. He can't do anything about it, obviously. You can't stop the point here like you can on clay, but to me, that appeared long. So much for my eyes. Come on, you're not going to give him that easy, are you? Bring out the one that did the other <laughs> one that was out. From the, another match. I don't know. <laughs> I've made this point repeatedly at Wimbledon, and you've heard it a lot. I know that I say Federer is the quietest player I've ever seen and not heard, obviously, in terms of his movement. It's not as it's not as evident on this surface. But is this the best movement you've ever seen from a player? Oh, that's too bad. I had a great opportunity to play Bjorn Borg, who's 11 time Grand Slam champion. I think his movement was up there with Federer. Right. Obviously, a different style of play. Quickness wise, there's a couple guys like Leighton, Hewitt, mm -hmm. Coria. Yeah. Yo, I guess I'm Creed. thinking more footwork. Look, footwork, he's certainly up there. Right, not sheer speed. Con Connors like had great footwork. <laughs> yep. Oh, gets to it easily. He's also fast, too. Not a, not a doubt as you're watching that develop. There's no doubt he's going to get to that ball. Not only is there no doubt, you just get the feeling he's actually going to do something. Right. That's, That's right. the amazing part. I mean, guys get to those shots. It's, it's, this artistry is, is amazing. to come into the net far more often than he did, for example, at Wimbledon. 
which you would think uh, would be basically more aggressive. Of course, you've been on the record quite a bit about your feelings of Federer's excellence. Connors, who you mentioned, while we were commentating on the Wimbledon final for NBC, Connors was doing it for BBC. First time he'd ever seen Federer in person. And Connors was blown away. We've heard, we've heard comments from people who heard that. The, the best of the best had said that. I saw your uncle Sampras wrote. Mm -hmm. That he was like Pete playing for the record books. We're going to get a chance to go out to this. Uh, David uh, David Nalbandian, who's the highest uh, seeded player in this second quarter of the draw, is in a four set tiebreaker. We've got to take a look in on that against Peter Vessels. I'll take that back. Now, Bandian's in Federer's would, would be. He's the highest seeded player to play, and then you play Federer in the quarters. It's, if all went according to plan. And Santoro with a couple of break points. Unfortunately for him, he's down two breaks. Two other matches being played. We're going to go to play you know, Bandian Vessels. Let's go two sets to one for now. Bandian, Peter Vessels, Dmitry Tursunov, and Fernando Gonzalez are at a set all four. And they're head to head. He has a number of wins, I believe, still has a winning record. We'll mm -hmm. check that. So Santoro, after a long service game held, and now Federer serves for the first set. Second time. To his credit, he's not gone away. He's, uh, he's giving Federer something to think about here. Well, it's, 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 the people don't talk a lot about Federer's serve, but it's very right. good. It's tough to read. He can hit it, pop it, and get into the 125, 130 range. He mixes up his spins. It's an effortless looking shot. He was, tough. he was right where we're. Oh, look. We're right behind where Roger was. You could just see him line it up mm -hmm. here. And he, he held it long enough where Santoro couldn't assume see, it was going to that spot. That, that's it doesn't really show again, but he has that gift, John. Set point here, like the great hitters in baseball. It almost seems like the ball holds on their racket for a moment, and then they direct it. And he also watches the ball so well. He. You see how he finished his shot, mm -hmm. and he's still looking at the spot where he hit it. Mm -hmm. Then he looks up. That's exactly what you want to do. Oh, we went for the finish there. human. Missed a pretty easy forehand. Double fault here. Set still not over. It's Deuce. Well, he may have 
miss that. that he, he did. did. Roger looking up at Jake Garner about his younger chair empire as I've ever seen. That's true. IBM point tracker shows it long. Wow, did this happen? This is the last time we saw Federer get broken twice in a set. Twice serving for a set. Federer is broken. Twenty-three thousand three hundred fifty-two here tonight. It is an all-time record attendance. Wow. At the U.S. Open tonight, and they will all go home saying they saw something <laughs> that they never have seen before. Roger Federer broke it twice in the same set. Not only that, he had a set point. We were told while we were doing the tiebreak at 5-3. Right. After having been broke.